gave him up for all of us, will he not with him also give us everything else? Who will bring any charge against God's elect? Is it God who justifies? Who is to condemn? It is, Jesus, it is Christ Jesus who died, yes. Who was raised, who is the right hand of God, who indeed intercedes for us. Who will separate us from the love of Christ? Will hardship or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? As it is written, for your sake, we are being called all day long. We are accounted as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all things, on all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the thoughts of all our hearts be pleasing in your sight, God, for you are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. The passage from Paul to the Romans that we heard this morning is probably very familiar to all of us. These are words of hope and promise, and are often read at funerals. Yet they can be misunderstood if we're not careful, particularly verse 28, which is translated in at least three ways. But the most accurate is, we know that in everything, God works for good with those who love God. We know that in everything, God works for good with those who love God. Paul is not saying that God causes all things to happen. Paul is not saying that everything that happens, good or bad, is the will of God. He's saying that in everything that happens, good or bad, God works for good with those who love God. Now, each of us must come, of course, to our own decision about how God works in the world and what role suffering and loss play in our life with God. Over the years, I have found that Paul's words are very helpful to me as I try to discern what I believe about God's will and suffering. Before going further with Paul, I want to talk a bit about the will of God, because the way we understand that makes a big difference in how we live. And I give the caveat, of course, that it's presumptuous to think that we know the will of God. On the other hand, we must try and discern the will of God in order that our lives be in the flow of God's will. We pray, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We need to have some understanding of what we believe it is that God wills us to do in God's world. For me, the most helpful discussion of the will of God comes from a very old little book by Leslie Weatherhead. It's called The Will of God. Weatherhead was the pastor of City Temple in London during World War II. Weatherhead suggests that God's will should be thought of as having three parts. God's will intentional, God's will circumstantial, and God's will ultimate. Intentional, circumstantial, ultimate. And he uses Jesus to illustrate this 
He says it was God's intentional will that Jesus be followed and obeyed. God came in Jesus. God sent Jesus that people would see the fullness of love revealed and love him and be his disciples. However, when people in their freedom decided to put him to death, it was God's circumstantial will that Jesus remained faithful to God, even to the cross. In the circumstances of human evil, Jesus remained true to God. In the end, after Jesus' death, God's ultimate will was done in that Jesus was raised by God, validating his life and teachings, and sending the risen Lord to be among those who would follow him. Paul was no Pollyanna. Paul personally suffered a great deal for his faith in Jesus Christ. He didn't bring easy answers for suffering, and nor did he believe it was God's will for people to suffer. But in the circumstances where people resisted Paul's message and persecuted him, it was God's will that Paul remained faithful to the gospel entrusted to him. In the years of Paul's ministry and since his death, people have found new life in his words and come to know God's ultimate will, that love is stronger than death, that nothing, nothing can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus, our Lord. It was in his life of faithfulness that Paul was able to say from his heart that in everything, God works for good with those who love God and that nothing can separate us from God's love in Christ, for that is God's ultimate will. Many years ago, when I was an interim pastor here in Connecticut for a pastor sabbatical, the phone rang one hot August evening. The secretary told me that a young man in the church had gone behind the family home and killed himself with a gun. I remember the father's first words to me. Will I ever get over this? I don't think we ever get over such tragedies. But with God's grace, we can get through them. The church family responded beautifully. They surrounded the parents and the brother with deep care and lasting love. So did the community. Seven years later, I was the, past, the interim for that pastor's next sabbatical, and I found that family intact. Not the same, of course, but intact, and in the process of living a new life. I do not believe it was the intentional will of God that that young man kill himself. But in the circumstances of his depression and hopelessness, he did. And in those circumstances, it was the will of God that people carry that family through the days, weeks, and years of sadness. God worked for good through them. And while this family will always bear the wound, they have found that nothing can separate them from the love of God. A few months ago, I was rereading some of Anne Morrow Lindbergh's writings. You remember that in 1932, their 18-month-old son was kidnapped, and that after 10 weeks of negotiation uh, and paying of ransom, he was found dead. In one of her books written 40 years later, hour of gold, hour of lead, she says this, and I quote, what I am saying is not simply the old Puritan truism that suffering teaches. I do not believe that sheer suffering teaches. If suffering alone taught all the world would be wise because everyone suffers. To suffering must be added mourning, understanding, Patience, love, openness, and the willingness to remain vulnerable. 
all these and other factors combined, if the circumstances are right, can teach and lead to rebirth, end quote. We all need to figure out for ourselves, and we may disagree with each other, and that's okay. But I do not believe that God intends for people to suffer. I do not think God wills cancer or plane crashes or floods, fires, the greed and violence of human beings that leads to war and depression or suicide. These are tragedies, diseases, and natural disasters. And in the circumstances of these, God can work for good with those who love God. I believe that in all circumstances, the God I have come to know in Jesus Christ does work for good. Often it takes a long time to see how God was working as we look back. Loving God does not protect us from suffering. We know that. But when we love God, and there is mourning, understanding, patience, love, and a willingness to remain vulnerable. We can find we're on the way with God to new life. That ultimately God's will for love, peace, and justice will prevail, even if I can't see that far ahead. And that is why with Paul, I can affirm that in everything, God works for good with those who love God and that nothing can separate us from the love of God. We know in Christ Jesus, our Lord. I close with a short reflection by Stephen Garnett Holmes. Neither sin nor doubt nor disbelief can separate you from the love of which you are made. There is no deserving no expectation that can affect the love you are given or the heart deep joy of the giver. No failure or triumph can change this love as absolute as gravity, as constant as the speed of light. Trust it and trust even your failure to trust it cannot stop it. Amen. Please rise as you're able and join us in hymn number 520, Eternal Spirit of the Living Christ. Mm -hmm. 
Let us join our hearts in a time of prayer, opening our time in silence as we name to God the concerns of our hearts. Let us pray. Oh, Holy One, we understand that it is often in the simple things of life that we find you. In a moment's quiet, or the reassuring voice of a friend, in the mystery of the seasons and the beauty of your creation. But our lives often get complicated. The problems on the earth and for the earth seem so unmanageable that we are far from simplicity. We thank you for the times when we get a glimpse of your love in our midst. It is those glimpses that restore our souls. We pray for the many who suffered this day, some we know and name, some we do not know, but we hear about them in the news daily. We know that many have suffered from the scorching heat of the summer. They have lost crops. Many have lost homes and people in floods. We pray for the people of Israel and Palestine as the violence escalates and destroys. Oh Lord, give the world's leaders wisdom. We pray for the people in the Ukraine. We pray for the people in Maui, still struggling to come back and who will be struggling for many months and years. And we pray for those grieving the terrible loss of someone they love. Help us to help where we can. Help us to be those who know you are present, Holy One, in all that happens, in our joys and in our sorrows, days of toil and hours of ease. Help us to love you with all our hearts and to be faithful to your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, for in him nothing can separate us from your love. Hear us now as we pray the prayer he taught to us saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Truly, God has given us everything we have. Now let us give gifts to the church so that God's work might be done through us. The morning offering will now be taken. 
that you bestow on us. Take these gifts and our lives and help us to use them to proclaim your love for all in your most beautiful world. All this we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Please remain standing if you're able for the closing hymn number 476, My Life Flows On, an Endless Song. <laughs> Thank mm -hmm. you. 